Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we have a debut on the channel today for The Bookworm and a puzzle called Colour Wheel, which has one of the most extraordinary rule sets I've ever seen in my life. Um, now, the reason we're doing this is because we had the most incredible recommendation for this puzzle from Damasosos92, who is a brilliant setter. Uh, in his own right, and uh, he wrote this uh, this email eulogising about this puzzle, saying that it, it, the logic in it is quite quite staggering, and pointing out that the bookworm apparently constructed this puzzle in ninety minutes as part of a speed setting competition, and um, yeah. Uh, apparently it is absolutely remarkable and I can believe that having read the rules now I did look it up in Logic Masters Germany unfortunately it doesn't it hasn't been solved enough times to get a rating yet <laughs> which is a bit disconcerting uh, and when I loaded it up um, on on the um, on the thingy thing I think it said it had been solved something like six or seven times so it's hardly been solved at all in a month so it's presumably, I'm guessing, quite hard. Uh, so forgive me if it takes me longer than the 90 minutes that the bookworm took to set the puzzle to actually solve it. We shall see. Anyway, that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, but I've got, I've got a few things I'd like to mention before we kick off. The first is we are closing in on 600,000 subscribers. I can hardly believe it on YouTube. Um, we are going to be releasing a very special puzzle pack if and when we get there featuring puzzles to celebrate 600,000 subs by people like Fistimafel and Kodek and um, Piotr V, Peter Venus and Tallcat um, and uh, I'm trying to think of some, James Sinclair uh, and uh, anyway you get the idea absolutely fantastic stuff so if you're not subscribed and you do enjoy the channel please consider subscribing. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to a YouTube channel. And all it means is that YouTube will recommend our videos as and when we release them. And we do realize, yes, that the problem, the problem we have so far as gaining subscribers is concerned, or one problem that we have, apart from my personality and uh, any, other, any, any number of other things. But no, one of the problems we have is that every single day since the start of the first COVID lockdown, we have released a video or two videos a day at the exact same time. So there is no need for anyone to subscribe, if, if you like, because once you've discovered the channel exists, you know there'll be a video at 8.30 and 11 p.m. UK time on every single day. Um, but um, in order to teach the algorithm <laughs> that we're still, we're still worth promoting, it would be very kind of you if you do like the channel, if you could, if you could subscribe. And let's try and hit that 600,000 milestone. Uh, anyway, that was one thing. Next thing, we are streaming Braid on Wednesday night at 10 p.m. UK time. We'd love to have your company for that. Um, this is apparently a platform game. It's by Jonathan Blow, the, the, the guy or the genius behind The Witness, which I absolutely loved um, when I streamed that. Uh, God, that was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Um, but anyway, love to have your company 10, 10 o'clock UK time on Wednesday. Uh, next thing is over on Patreon. Two things to mention. First, there is a solve by me of a very, very hard Fistimafel puzzle called Sky Skyscrapers. Um, so if you like long videos um, where we tackle very, very difficult puzzles, that might be up your street. It's a 90 minute video and um, yeah, I was very relieved to finish it at all. Um, and of course, the other thing we've got coming up on the 1st of June over on Patreon is this. Blobs is Lord of the Rings Sudoku Hunt, featuring the art of none other than Ted Naismith, um, one of the world's best Tolkien or um, artists. Um, you can see some of Ted's work there. This is a, this is a very special one. So um, yeah, this competition starts on the 1st of June over on Patreon. Um, I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen. Um, now, was there anything else? I don't think there was. Let's... Um, Let's do some birthdays. Fraser, you have turned 19 today. Many happy returns, my friend. Um, I'm, I, I know this because your friend Ben wrote to us and I'm, I was delighted to hear, Fraser, that you've been telling other people about the channel to the, to the extent that Ben has become a convert. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. And I hope you have a great birthday today with, of course, lots of chocolate cake. Now, now and then we go over to Macedonia 
and I may well, I'm really sorry if I don't pronounce this correctly, I will try. I'm going to say Ubuino, Ubuino. Like that could be so wrong. But Ubuino, I think it's your birthday. I think you've turned 29 today. I know this because your wife, Stefania, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, uh, wrote to us, um, wrote, wrote a lovely email actually, um, and clearly loves you very much, and says that you're getting closer to her three in the corner and you will love it. I don't know what that means, but we know many happy returns. Send me a picture. I don't know what Macedonian chocolate cake is like, but I'd be interested to know. Um, next, we'll go to Sean. Now, Sean, your brother Thomas wrote to us. I think you've turned 27 today. And Sean, I, rem I think I've read out your birthday before. You're the guy who plays Protoss, and you've been playing Protoss since Brood War, haven't you? Think of all the Terran tears that you have caused in the world. Um, I mean, there are no excuses for playing Protoss for that long, Sean. I'm disappointed in you. But, um, but anyway, thank you for watching the channel. And I hope you have a great birthday today with chocolate cake. And I'm sure we can both agree that once Protoss as a race is deleted from the game, the world will be a better place. Um, and then finally, Hans. Hans, you've turned 23 today. And I know this because your godfather, Raoul, wrote to us and told us that you love games and puzzles and you are studying chemistry. And you also, I think, like chocolate cake. So, Hans, I hope you get a very good and very large slice of chocolate cake today. And that's all the news. Let's have a look at the co no, color wheel by the bookworm. Um, oh, that's a very strange sounding bird outside. But so far, no maverick. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Because if my office is bugged, we're about to get a visit. But anyway, these are the rules of the puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply, which means we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Um, digits in a cage do not repeat. Sum all the digits in a cage, and then color each cage according to the last digit of its sum, i.e. cages that sum to values with the same last digit are the same color, and cages that sum to values with a different last digit are different colors. Numbers in the top left corner of a cage, brackets cage X, give the sum of all orthogonally adjacent cages of different colors to cage X. So what does that mean? Let's highlight that cage for a moment. So that is a 31 cage in a domino, but it's, but it's not adding its own digits. It's adding up it's adding up orthogonally adjacent. Okay, we better deal with that first of all. What does orthogonally adjacent mean? It means shares an edge with. Goodness me, there's some sort of strange bird noises again. Um, so this cage here, although it touches this blue cage at a point, um, it's not orthogonally adjacent. So it cannot form part of this 31 sum. That is Maverick, he has taken off. I don't believe it. Um, so what we have to do is look at these cages, I think, and we have to determine which, and maybe all of these cages, don't end with the same last digit as the sum of those two numbers. This is mad. And those ones will add to 31. That, that is mad. That is absolutely mad. Um, have I really understood? I think I've understood that correctly. So if these two squares added to 8, for example, then all of these cages that didn't have a sum that ended in an 8 would be summed and should sum to 31. I think that's, I think that's what we're being told. Um, now there's one more rule. But at least this rule is a rule I have seen in puzzles before. It says every digit except the digit in the central cell, row five, column five, has a partner digit that is always placed 180 degrees rotationally symmetrical to it, seen from the center of the grid. Which digits are paired up must be deduced by the solver. Example, if the digits one and two turned out to be a rotational pair and row two, column four is a one, so if that is a one, well, I think the rotationally symmetrical equivalent of that square is that cell. So I think that must be a two. 
yeah row eight column six must be a two so so the instructions agree with me yeah so this is basically we have to imagine that the grid can spin around a half turn and then so let's do another example which where would that that's what which cell would that correspond to if we spun the grid round a half turn well it would correspond to that one so these two squares should form a rotational pair but we don't know we don't know what the pairs are so we're going to have to figure that out as we go along do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking now well there is one thing i will i will say it's slightly fatuous but i'm going to say it seven and nine i think are rotationally symmetrical as given digits in the grid so wherever we manage to place another seven or another nine so say i worked out that square was a nine i would immediately know that that square was a seven i think um i think that's what we're being told anyway I hope that's right. Um, I mean, I don't really know where to look. I'm guessing it's the middle box, and perhaps just just because all the cages sit within it. Um, and and perhaps we can use the secret, can we? I don't really understand how we use the secret. 31 and 22 in dominoes just well 10 in a single cell seems ludicrous doesn't it so what what's the 10 saying the 10 is saying that let's just say that cells two <laughs> so if this cells are two i have to find the cages that surround the 10 cage that touch the 10 cage which is all four of these cages I have to discover which ones don't have sums that end in two. I sum those up and I get 10 is what we're being told. Right, so not all. Only some, right, okay, let's get rid of that digit. So only some of these cages could actually not be blue. Because even if, even if I made those squares, if I made as many squares as possible in box five add up to ten i couldn't have more than four could i because i could make these one two three and four they would add up to ten that's fine um but these cages would then have to be blue for ex so yeah so if let's just think about this so if i made those purple and then i tried to say yeah one more cage was not blue then these digits would count and they couldn't count so there's a maximum there is a cap on how many of these cages are not blue are, are not blue yeah so if so i feel like either one cage we're either going to have one cage that's not blue or two cages that are not blue but not three or four cages that are not blue so let's just think about that so if this was a three seven pair that would add up to ten and let's say that was a different color to that one so now all of these have to be blue and all of these have the same end digit as blue right and that doesn't work good grief it is that it is the secret i could have oh, I, could, I mentioned it might be the secret it is the secret i think right so let's 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 t let's talk about the secret if you're still watching this video after 14 minutes you definitely are one of my favorite people because you must have an interest in puzzles to last this long and you I, i'll certainly tell you the sudoku secret um now the secret is that this box indeed any box of a sudoku if we correctly complete it because of the rules of sudoku it will contain the digits one to nine once each and if we sum those digits we get 45. now if this domino summed to 10 what do the blue cells therefore sum to well they sum to 35 but there are four of them 
So what unit digit are we going to end these cage sums in? I mean, it, there's no, nothing will work, will it? Yeah, so I think what we're going to end up with is a 5 here. This is really clever already. I mean, it's 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 beautiful logic. It, honestly, good grief. Um, yeah, because obviously, you know, these can't all end in what one, because then they should sum to a number that ends in a four, and we know they need to sum to a number that ends in a five. If they all end in two, they all together they add they add up to eight, don't they? Or the units digit is an eight. It, it just won't work. But what we could do is switch that. And change this now to be one, two, three, and four. And why does this work? Well, it changes things slightly because now it's only these blue squares. There's only three cages now that have to sum up to 35. And now I can think of a digit that when I multiply it by three, I get to a number ending with that same digit. So when I multiply five by three, I get 15, which also ends in five. So that so what what that's saying is that uh, it, well firstly it's saying that the blue the blue cages in this box end in or sum to numbers that end in five and therefore because this can't be a fifteen in the middle of the puzzle that is a five. Now the, the other problem we've got here though is that this the, the arrangement I've done is completely arbitrary. I don't know. Well, I know I do know something. I do know some. Actually, I know I've got it wrong. <laughs> That's what I know I've got. I know I've got it wrong. Um, yeah, I know I've got it wrong because, well, let, let me show you. Because there's a nine and a seven. It, nine and seven are meant to be symmetrically opposite each other. So it can't be this arrangement because, I mean, the symmetrical equivalent of these cells are in the purple cells so this is not right um we've right okay so we've either got i don't know how we're going to depict this really we've either got this or this we've got one of these things going on where either green or orange is actually going to be blue <laughs> um and those digits that are in the pseudo blue color are going to be yeah they get they're going to be so well not only are they going to be six seven eight nine that's true but they're also going to be in cages that sum to 15 because we know everything that is blue in in this box has to has to has to be a cage that ends in a five so we're going to have 15 15 and five as three of the cages and then, well, hmm. and then the cages that add up to, f well, the cages that contain the one, two, three, and the four can't add up to five, can they? Because otherwise they would also be blue and not count in the ten. This is bonkers. So they have to add up to not five. Um, right. Okay. So... So I presume we look at the 31 or the 22 now. The 31 is a very big number. And the 31... The 31 is either blue or not blue. So if it... If it's not blue uh, yeah okay sorry yes I think I think this is obvious well obvious as uh, obvious as anything can be in the mad world of the bookworm um, I think I think this might have to be blue Uh, let me just, I think it's that way round. If this, 
Yeah, so that's actually clarified it for me. Right. <laughs> I know it's not. I know it's the most tiny deduction, t tiny adjustment, but it, it, made, it has made it clearer. Yeah, because look, if these squares are the one, two, threes, and fours, and these squares therefore are the ones, twos, threes, and fours, because the nines and the sevens have to be opposite one another, then we know that the green squares do not add up to five or do not end in a five, which means any cage that does end in a five is included in the count of this cage. Well, this is a 15, that's a 15, and that's a five. So there's 35 already, and that's only a 31 clue. So it can't be that way around. This is brilliant. It's, it's what's so weird about this, right, is that this, this logic is, is magical, but it's very difficult to understand, I would, I would say. I would say, I mean, how long have I been going? 21 minutes. And, and I'm, I can, I can see the points that are emerging, but not quickly at all. And to set with this constraint would be, you know, you've got to have such a grasp of it. It's really clever. Now, okay, so now let's double check. Have we, well, I've just realized something else that I might have done wrong. And that is that I'm making both of these green, which implies they have the same ending, which is not going to be true actually at all, is it? Because these digits are one, two, three, and four. Neither cage can add up to five. So one will add up to um, more than five and the other will add up to less than five, I think. So these have different endings, so they have different colors. Now, okay, so now these squares are six, seven, eight, and nine. And we know that wherever the nine is, so say that was the nine, that will be the seven. If that's the nine, that will be the seven. Ra ah, 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 okay, so six, so six and eight map to each other. Sorry, that's obvious as well, isn't it? And five maps to itself because it's the central digit. Yeah, because there's got to be fives. So say that was a five in the grid. Well, what's that square going to be? That's going to have to be five. Five is going to ma map on the rotation to itself. So actually, we now know more things. We know, I'm going to write this down. Um, we know that seven maps to nine. We know six maps to eight. We know five maps to itself. And therefore, so therefore, sort of, We've got two more combinations to find that involve, but they only involve little digits. Ones, two, so ones, twos, threes, and fours map, map somehow. We can't. Can we have more digits mapping to themselves? Or I think I think the rule said something about it was only the central digit. Every digit except the digit in the central, so it has a partner digit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think I think that one is not mapping to one, two is not mapping to two, etc. That's how I read that rule anyway. Um, so thirty-two here. Is that where we look? Or do we keep looking at the thirty-one and the twenty-two? Thirty-two, what's that doing? Thirty-two is summing some number of those four cages. Now that's horrible, actually. That is horrible. Because you could even, yeah, I mean, if you had a seven, eight, nine in there, you're almost there already, aren't you? So you could, ha you could, you could have all four cages included in the count if these all had quite low totals, or you could probably have two only in the count if, say, that was massive and then that was the balance or something. Okay, maybe, so maybe I'm not meant to go there. Maybe I'm meant to keep going on the... Well, let's try the 31 cage. What, what, what do we know now? We know yeah, we know the 31 cage already has tens worth of cages to include in its count. So, right, so, 
here is a deduction. So some portion, maybe all, of these, these cells have to sum to 21. But what I can tell you is that that cage is not blue. Because if that cage was blue, then this domino would have to add to 21. And it can't, because even if it, well, it can't actually be 8, 9, but it wouldn't matter if it could be. It still wouldn't add up to 21. So this cage is some new colored cage, but it might be the same as these. We don't know. Um, that's definitely included in the 21, but this might be as well. Um, now... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> How does it work on the other side? On the other side, we, we do also see the tens worth of cages within the 22. So we need 12 more. 12 more from those cells. But again, it might only be some portion of these cells if either of these cages is blue. Both of them can't be blue because we do need 12 more. Um, right, here is a tiny deduction that I think is valid then. I'm not even sure this does very much, but I, I'm going to I'm going to mention it. Um, Actually, I'm not even sure it's right now either. I think it's right. If, um, let's say all of these, all of this here was not blue. So that would mean, I think, that these five cells have to add up to 12. That's quite difficult. That is quite difficult to do. Because all of these digits, well, these digits could be a minimum of 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's 10 already, so this can't be more than 2. So this is either a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple, and this is a 2, or it's a 1, 2, 3, 5 quadruple, and that's a 1. That's the only two things that work. And I don't think that can be right, because isn't that making this too small? And that, Sorry, and the reason I can see that quickly is that... Um, the only digits that these this set of digits, even if I include the four, it's not going to change anything. These digits only map to these digits. And I don't think you can get those to add up to 21. If I'm well, you can't, you can see. Um, what's the most these could be? Five fourth. Well, no, it's it's not that, is it? It's the most these could be. Well, they could be 5, 4, 3, and 2. And that, that couldn't be another 5, because there can only be one 5 in here. So you could, have, you could have double 4 up here, which is 8, plus 5, 3, 2, which is 10. So that's 18. That's nowhere near. There's no way, right. So there is no way that all of these cells are counted. And that means that exactly one of these cages is blue. Now, which one? Uh, and what does it add up to, actually? Because now I'm realising that, that that is not a simple question. Because if that's... Let me just think about this. If that's blue... It either adds up to 5 or 15. Now, if it's 15, it would have to be 6, 9, wouldn't it? Which would mean that would definitely be blue as well. So this would have to add up to, what was it, 21? Yeah, uh, so... Th I think that's right, isn't it? Because I know that th I know that some cage here adds up to fifteen, 
by necessity because it has to end in a five. So there's always, one of these cages is nine six, and we know that maps by rotational symmetry to a seven eight cage. So if this is a fifteen cage, this is a fifteen cage with the other digits in it. So that would be as like a seven eight pair. But now now this wouldn't count in the thirty one. So that would be um, that would be three digits adding to twenty one, and that doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, we haven't actually, I haven't got there yet, but, but I can see that this is not a 15 cage because these digits can't be big enough. Because if this is 9, 7 and 8, the maximum they can be is 5 and 6 and the maximum that can be is 9 and that only adds up to 20. So that's a bit sus, isn't it? Um, but yeah, here, here, is, here is the other problem. If this, this doesn't have to add up to 15, it could add up to 5. And be say a one four pair. Now, now, why is my brain telling me that that adds up to five now? Yeah, that's fine though. That's different. That's a very different state of affairs. So even if I'm right that that is a 5, that's under much less pressure, isn't it? I think. Am I right, though? If that, if that's 1, 4, let's just, put, let's just put, let's put 1 and 4 in. So I'm saying this is a pair that adds up to 5. And I'm saying what... What are the counterparts over here? Now, one possibility is that one's counterpart is four. But if one's counterpart is four, then four's counterpart is one. And that would be a four, and that would be a one, and these would add up to five. That's fine. One's counterpart could be three. If one's counterpart is three, three and one are a pair, aren't they? So four can't partner up with three or ones. It has to partner up with two. So this, yeah, that is right. That was weird. My sort of subconscious is telling me that this is how this worked, but I couldn't sort of articulate it until I actually, I'm actually working through the possibilities. If one maps to two, then two and one are partners. So four and three must be partners, and this is going to add up to five. Right. So we now are learning that if this is blue, this is blue. I don't know what digits it's got in it, but it's definitely blue, which means this. Yeah, this is why it's different though, because these digits are tiny and this has to add up to 21 on its own. But now there isn't a 7-8 pair locking down the value of these digits. So this is probably very possible. And these cages Ooh, I don't think so. No, okay, I'm going to claim this is this can't work. But this is a very this is a very obscure. This is a very obscure deduction and might be absolute bobbins. Here is my reason for this without doing any arithmetic really at all. Okay. We've reached a situation in this world where this little cage here sums to 21 and this little cage, its transposed partner, sums to 12. Now the difference between 12 and 21 is 9, which means that whatever digits I put in here, their transposed partner or well, the sum of the transposed partners have to be nine different. Why do I, why do I think this is a problem? Well, look, nine, nine, nine and seven, for example, if we were to put a nine in, in there, if that's a nine, this digit is a seven. So it has accounted for two of difference between 21 and 12. That's not nearly enough, is it? All of these high, I mean, if we put a five in here, it wouldn't count for any difference. So now if we put a nine in there or an eight, or a seven or a six, the only, the maximum difference between that digit and its transposed counterpart is two, which means the other two digits would have to account for seven of transposed difference. And that's impossible because even if one and four were counterparts, 
that's only three of difference we'd still need a we still need one of these to have a four of difference transposed partner which doesn't exist so okay so we can say without even doing any arithmetic this is wrong now what now what i can't remember is what we were even trying to prove with this what we were trying to prove it was something to do with this wasn't it uh, let me go back it was something to do with something down here I worked out I worked out that not all of those digits were not blue so I worked out some of these I worked out that one of these cages exactly one of these cages was blue and now I've worked out it's not this cage right so that cage is blue which means this cage is not blue um, because and this oh la, oh look this cage contains digits that add up to 12 and not five seven so that's four eight or three nine which means this cage contains digits or it contains a six or a seven and then a one two three or four depending on what the counterpart is to this digit the three or the four that's in there whatever its counterpart is in the in the transposing nonsenses uh, this is not a five cage it's a 15 cage it can't be a 25 cage right so that is a 15 cage and whatever this is it transposes here to some some cage or other um do i know now whether this ends in a five i feel it's very difficult for this to end in a, no that can't end in a five yeah that's lovely right that cage counts towards the 31 in fact oh no this is better than that isn't it right let's look at the exact possibility for this this has got a seven or a six in it and the other digit is a one, two, three, or four. Now, how could this be a blue cage then? It can't be, it would have to be a 15 cage because it can't be a five cage because it's got a seven or a six in it. And it can't be a 15 cage because the seven or a six is not being partnered up with an eight or a nine. So this is a new type of cage. Um, and, but the maximum value of this cage, I think is 11, seven plus four. And 11 plus 10 is 21, it's not 31. So that cage is also, um, is also contributing to the 31 count. So these five squares now sum up to 21. And that's a maximum of 11. So this is a minimum of 11. Okay. What do we do with this knowledge? Uh, right. I can say something about the twenty-five cage now. The tw the twenty-five cage is not the same colour as that cage <laughs> because if these were the same color the only thing that the 25 cage would be summing would be a maximum of those digits which we now uh, we now know add up to 21 and 21 is not the same as 25 so these so this cage and this cage are different um But if that's 21, oh, so here's a point. Right, that cage is yellow or purple. Because I think this is right. The minimum sum of that cage is six. If this was a one, two, three, triple. So if, if all of, if, if purple and yellow, which add to 21, were added to this, we would get at least 27 and 27 is bigger than 25 so that means one of these cages 
is being knocked out. And it must be exactly one of the cages, because that can't add up to 21 on its own. 25, sorry, on its own. So this 25, it's definitely summing that one. So we give that one its own colour. Orange. No, I've used orange red. Um, and by the way, all of these colours could, you know, it's perfectly possible that cage and that cage could be the same. Could be this. Uh, maybe not that cage and that cage, but do you know what I mean? It's possible that some of these colours are overlapping. I'm just trying to, at the moment, extrapolate certain bits of logic in certain. Um, limited parts of the grid. Uh, now I've confused myself by saying that. So what am I saying? I'm saying this cage either is either there's 25 I should say is either summing this and this or this and this. Um, but that's a maximum of it. No, that's fine, isn't it? If that's 11 and that's 14, that would be fine. I've got 22 here. It, it is completely symmetrical, is it, this puzzle? In terms of... No, ah, oh, no, it's not, actually. That cage is not symmetrical with that cage. There's a lot of symmetry, but it's not absolute. But the 22 cage is touching a lot of cages. Fifteen cage is mapping to that cage. Twenty cage is mapping. Well, it's mapping to something up there, but that 20 needs to be... Ah! Ah, thank goodness, that's easy as well. Sorry, I hadn't even thought about this. I worked out some time ago that was a 15 cage. How could that be included in the count of this 20 cage? This is huge, because this is blue, isn't it? Because this cage... If it included 15, it needs 5 more. Well, that those two, we know, add up to 12. They, they do not add up to 5. And those are three different digits, which would be at least 6 if they were 1, 2, and 3. So they don't add up to 5. So this cage is not counted in the count of that 20 cage. And the only way that can be is if this is blue cage. So this blue cage is now adding that cage, because this, this now ends in 5, and that cage... So this cage adds up to 8. This is unbelievable. So this, this has definitely got a 1 in it. Now 1 maps to a, well, a digit we don't know, but a low digit. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so actually, um, because I know, actually, I'm going to just slightly change my um, notation here. This cage adds up to 8. Now the digits in it, therefore are made up of 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s or 5s, because it's either a 1, 2, 5 or a 1, 3, 4 cage. Now, in terms of my transpositions, therefore, I'm only... those digits only transpose to other low digits, so these digits are all low. Um, that must be true. Now... Well, now I want to say 5, 4, 3 is 12, 11. Yeah, okay, so now I know, now I know which of these cages is added up with this cage, <laughs> in this cage, 25 total, I think. Because this 25 total, we know it's made up of red and one of these cages. Well, the maximum size of red now would be if it was 3, 4, 5, adding up to 12. And 12 plus the maximum value of this cage is not 25, because this can't add up to 13, because it's only got one high digit in it. And that's the digit that the 8 or the 9 transposes into. 
So that means that this cage, well, it means that cage perversely is purple because this is not counted in its sum. But this is, so this is not purple. And now these cages add up to 25. So this cage adds up to oh, hang on I'm gonna get I'm getting confused now um, the maximum that adds up to is 12 so the minimum this adds up to is 13 that's the minimum but but that's putting pressure on this one oh, this is this is unbelievable how do how did you do this I mean, if this had been a month's worth of work, I would understand a bit. But the logic is so, it's really crisp, isn't it? Because this is lovely, because now getting a restriction on yellow is restricting this. Because yet the, the minimum value of yellow is 13. And But I know those five cells sum to 21. So the maximum value of this domino is 8. And that means... Well, it definitely hasn't got four in it. I don't think it's got three in it either, because three would be accompanying at least a six. That's nine. So this is this is made up of a six or a seven and a one or a two. And this case, so, so the maximum sum of this now is now nine. So the minimum sum of this is 12. And that doesn't work because if this was 12 what's this this has got to add up to 13 it can't add up to 13 because even if i pick the biggest options 5 4 and 3 it only adds up to 12. so this doesn't add up to what did i say 9 it doesn't add up to 9. it might add up to 8. 8 you can just do you go 8 13 12 or 7, 14, 11, well, they are the only options. Yeah, so this is either 13 or 14, this is either 7 or 8. And this is either 12 or 11. Let me know how to... I can't do 11. <laughs> I, don't, I, can't, I can't repeat the pencil mark 1. Okay, but that means if this is at least 11, it's got to have 5 and 4 in it. It can't have 1 in it. Uh, no, it could have 2, couldn't it? So, yeah, it's 5 and 4 and 2 or 3. And down here, this adds up to eight. This is definitely oh, this has definitely got one in it. So this is either one two five or one three four. And this is either five four three or five four two. Oh, I've got it. Oh, that's, this is so clever. Oh, goodness. Right. So this has got five in it. Five maps to itself. So this has got five in it. And now I know it's composition. It's one, two, five. So this is one, two, five. The five maps to itself. The one and the two. One of them maps to a four. One of them maps to a four, but the other one maps to something that I don't think I know. Do I know that? <laughs> I'm not sure, sorry. Um, this is one, two, five. This is either five, four, three or five, four, two. This is either 13 or 14. 
This is seven or eight. The only way it can be seven, if it's six one, it's got two ways of being eight. If it's six one, if it's six one, this is not, no, uh, no, this is eight. And three or four. Um, I realize, sorry, I realize I've stopped speaking. I'm just trying to. But the difference between this and this. Oh, I see, you can do it. I was wondering about um, how we could lock in the difference between this and this. Because this is definitely 12. And if that was 7, we know that the high digit, the 8 or the 9, whatever it is, it transposes to a different, a, a digit too different from it. So if this only adds up to 7, the 3 or the 4 must adjust to a digit that's 3 different from it. And the only way that can work is if 4 is transposing to 1. And that could work here as well. Look, that that was, that had one in it and that had four in it. Well, we know that that does exist as a possibility, so I think that's okay. Right, goodness me. So, how do we do this then? Um... Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I know I've stopped speaking. I'm, I am, th I am trying to think. If this is seven or eight, that's seven. This is fourteen. This is eleven. One or two. Am I being, I feel like I'm being slow. I feel like I'm missing something here. Three. Hmm. Three or four goes to one or two. So, so hang on, hang on, hang on. Am I being, I may be, I'm being completely and utterly obtuse here. So it, yeah, so can't we say, the, these two cages are telling us that there is definitely a, an equivalence between a high digit, and when I say high digit, I mean a high low digit. I mean, if we just focus in on the numbers one, two, three, and four, three and four are the high ones of those, and one and two are the low ones. So let's imagine that four partners up with one. Well, then one and four are friends, aren't they? They are always partners. So we would fill one and four in here and the, all we'd be left with is a two, three. Two and three would be partnered up. So the fact, yeah, yeah, okay. So the fact that one high digit, high digit being a three or a four, partners up with one low digit, one or two, means that the one and the two individually always partner up with the high digits the three and the four what we don't have yeah it's it's obvious when i say it like this well, the way i'm about to say it, it makes it more obvious it is not possible in this puzzle for three and four to be partners or for one and two to be partners because if that if they were this could not exist as a transposition and that means that i now know how this works one and two transpose to three and four and there's no two up there that's so clever I mean, that how long has that taken me to sit here and stumble into that 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 this puzzle is brilliant it's very original so now this is 12 
And if this is 12, I know what that sums to. 13. Uh, yeah, 13. And if that's 13, I know this is 8. Right, well, that's good. <laughs> Has that helped? Um, yes. Right, so now... Now I'm going to come back here, because if this adds up to 8 and this adds up to 12, then each digit's transposition is doing 2's worth of damage, if you like. So because we know the 8 and the 9, whichever one they are, they transpose to a digit that is 2 different from them. So the other 2 of difference, to make up the, the total difference between 8 and 12, is 4. 2 of which is being dealt with by the high digit. So 2 needs to be dealt with by the low digit. So if this was 4, it must transpose to a 2. And if this was 3, it must transpose to a 1. But it doesn't matter which of those it actually is, does it? Because if 3 is transposing to 1, 1 and 3 are friends, and 2 and 4 are friends. And if 2 and 4, if this has got a 4 in it and it's transposing to 2, then 2 and 4 are friends, and 1 and 3 are friends. So one always goes with three in this puzzle and two always goes with four in this puzzle. That is absolutely beautiful. That doesn't mean I know what, what these are, but these, these are now the combinations. And, right, look at this. So now the only way that you don't adjust by two when you do a transposition is if five is involved. So, right, and what that means, which is marginally interesting, is that 5 is not involved in the transposition, 5 is not involved in that 13 uh, cage. Because if it was, 5's going down there, and, and 5 would be a counting, that can't be a 5, but let's make that a 5, which would go to that one, wouldn't it? 5 is accounting for zero difference between the total of this and the total of this, which means the other two digits have to account for exactly a difference of 2. That is not possible, because there are two of them, and any, diff any digit we put in itself accounts for a difference of 2. And two digits can either therefore account for a difference of 4 or a difference of 0 if they're in the other direction. They can never account for a difference of 2. So there is no 5 in these. Um... So, so there's no 5 in the 13. Right, so it's got one high digit in it, this, this 13 cage. Because it can't have two high digits, because 6 and 7 would require a 0 into the other square. So there's one high digit in here and two low digits. So if we put 6 in there, what's that? Do? Let's just think about that for a moment. If I put 6 in there, the other two digits have to add up to 7. And they would have to be 4 and 3. Because they couldn't, we can't repeat the 6. We can't use a 5. So 4 and 3 go to 1. Well, that doesn't work. Because 4 and 3 go to 1 and 2. And I can't put 1 and 2 in the 15 cage because I can't put 12 in the other cell. So that's wrong. If that's 7 on the other hand, then I need 6 more into these squares from low digits, which don't use 5. So they have to be a 2-4 pair. And 2 and 4, 2 and 4 go to themselves. Oh, okay, so that works. That's interesting. Because if you put a 2-4 pair in there, they go over there and become a 2-4 pair. But 7 transposes to 9. And 9 plus 2 plus 4 is 15. So that works. Um, so 7's okay. If you go 8, then you need these two to add up to 5, which is... Well, this never works. Sorry, this, is, this, this doesn't work. Just mathematics takes this out because 8 always transposes to 6. And now I need those two squares to add up to 9 to get to 15 using only the digits 1, 2, 3 and 4. And there's only two of them. That, that's just nonsense. So if we can rule out 9, is 9's not going to work. For the same reason, 9 goes to 7. And then these two squares... Oh, no, that doesn't work. These two squares have to add up to 8 using only the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4. It doesn't work. Right, so there's a 7 in here. This is 2, 4, 7. This is... 
um, 249. And there we go. We've got we've done a bit better. Um, oh, there's no four there by Sudoku. There's a four in there. If that's not four, the transposition, which is that square, is not two. Oh, look, and it's so weird. We could have got that the other way around because there's a two in there knocking a two out of that. And the four up here had the same effect. Ah, oh, come on, come on. Oh, I've just tri tripped over an hour. That has flown past. Um, if we... What, so what's this? This is one seven or two eight. So it's definitely got a digit in common. Right, I see. Where, right, okay. Whatever this is, one seven or two six, sorry. One seven or two six. If this is 1, 7, that's a 7. If this is 2, 6, that's a 2. So that is never a 4. That's a 2, 7 pair. This is always a 4. And 4, trans... Oh, 4 is not there. So 4 is here. 4 transposes to 2. So the, the 2 is not there. There's definitely a 2 in one of these two squares. But also, that's a 4. So that's a 2. So this is not a 2. I've got a 4, 9 pair here. I'm going to take out that 1-5 pencil mark because we've basically used, we know that that's happening now. That's not a 2, so that's not a 6. And if that's not a 2, that's not a 4. If that's not a 6, that's not an 8. This is bizarre. Um, uh, though, can we do the secret on this box? I don't know. Um, do we? We know this is ending in a number, a five number, so it's fifteen or twenty-five. And this, this is twelve. I don't think that could be. Can that be twenty-five? Really? If that's twenty-five, thirty-seven, thirty-nine. These have to add up to six. No, that doesn't work. These can't be a 1-5 pair. They couldn't be 2-4 in that case. And they can't be a 1-5 pair because both of those digits would have to be a 2. So this is not a... This is a 15 cage is what we've just deduced. Uh, but now we can do maths and get these two digits. At least we can work out what they have to add up to. Because we've got 12, 27, 29, 16. So they're a 7-9 pair. That's the only way of making two digits add up to 16. Seven and nine map to themselves. So that is, oh, that's gorgeous because that's a seven, nine pair. So this hasn't got seven in it. So this, so this is a six, two pair. And we know the order apparently. Yeah, we do. We do know the order. So six goes there, two goes there, two goes there, seven goes there. And we can use this now. So six goes to eight. 2 goes to 4. This does add up to 12 so by some miracle. Uh, that's not 8. So 8 is... 8 opposite is 6. So that's... Oh, see, look, it's sort of doing it itself. Um, that's a 4. That's a 9 by Sudoku. Uh, Oh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> we had a flurry of activity. Um, do I know what that adds up to? No, but I know I know roughly what it adds up to, because it's got to be a number ending in eight. So it's either eighteen or twenty-eight. I bet it can't be twenty-eight. If it's twenty-eight, thirty. No, it can't be, because if that's twenty-eight. 28 plus 8 is 36, which means by the secret, these have to add up to 9. But that, that, that's already at least a 7, and that's already at least a... Well, that is a 4. That's already 11. That's not a minus 2. So this adds up to 18. Um, which means these add up to 15. So, okay, they add up to 15. They're not 6, 9. So this is 7, 8, and I know the order. Good grief. So that's 7, that's 8, that's 9, which means that's 9, that's 7. But we can do better. 
because that digit is a, that digit's counterpart is six. Okay, and now I can see these are one three five, and these are one three five, and that's not five, and that's not five. And these aren't nine or seven. So this is a six eight pair, which means these squares are a seven nine pair. And I know the order that's seven, that's nine. So that's six and that's eight. Good grief. Good grief. There's some puzzles that you do them and you just think, well, this has been set by a genius. This has been set by a genius. And that's what I'm thinking here. I might get rid of this now because I'm trying to do Sudoku with this eight. And I don't. And that seven nine is grating on me. Um, OK, so what on earth do we do now? Oh, I'll tell you one thing I can do that's very obvious and you've been shouting at me and I feel a bit embarrassed about, but forgive me. Um, there's a four in this cage. Well, I'm not putting one in it as well because one and four add up to five and would turn orange into blue and that is a thing we mustn't do. So that is a four and a three, which means this is a one and a two. Let's get rid of our corner pencil mark. So that's now one. That's a three. One, two, five, triple in the bottom row. This is, there's a three, oh, I see a three, four, five, triple in the top row. Um, okay. What are we going to do? Oh, well, okay, where's three and five in row three? They're not there, are they? They've got to be there. And three and five's counterparts are one and five, I want to say. I think that's right, which is there, therefore. So these squares are six and three by Sudoku, which goes to one and eight on the other side. <laughs> I don't know why I don't just do, by, do, do that by Sudoku, but I don't seem to want to. Right, these are two, six, nine. And two, six and nine go to four, four, seven, eight. That is right. <laughs> I did it by transposition. I could have done it by Sudoku. That's not seven in the corner. Um, we could probably do the same up there. That's not nine. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. Okay, so it's going to be... Well, it's going to be this cage and this cage or Sudoku that I've, I've, that I've overlooked. Um, so let's have a look at this. How are we going to do this then? This is going to be the complicated bit. Well, if, if what we've done already isn't complicated because this there's an awful lot of cageage here. Um, although, by Sudoku, that hasn't got a great many options, has it? It really doesn't, actually. What That could be one. It can't be two. It can't be three because that's already in its cage. It can't be four. It can't be five is already in its cage. Gosh, it can only be one or six. It can't be nine, eight or seven as well. So that's one or six. So the actual value of this cage is nine or four, nine or 14. Uh, that is eight. That is seven. And those have nothing in common. Right, so whether this is one or six, these cages count towards the 22 and they add up to 15. So there is another seven's worth. Oh, this is a good grief. It's just, it's so lovely when you spot it. Yeah, I need seven more for this cage. Well, I've got two possibilities. I've got two three cell cages. So whichever one of those is in, it must be a seven cage and that can't be a seven cage because there's already a four there. So this is a one, two, four triple. That's a one in the corner by Sudoku. Two, four pair. That's not four. There's a three, five pair now. That's a two in the corner. Uh, I should know that digit. That's a seven by Sudoku. So these squares are six and eight, which we know transpose to themselves. So that's six and eight. One in the corner goes to... Th 
<laughs> that is gorgeous. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. That is just, oh, look, six, eight pair. That's weird. Look at that. We've just filled, the last digits we've filled in have been one, two, three, and four in the corners. Well, it almost looks like that's how the bookworm might have started the puzzle by putting one, two, three, and four in the corners. That's a four. That's a two. These are not four. So that's seven, eight, which do go to six, nine. That's exactly what we'd expect. Um... So this cage is the same brand as this cage because we, we want we want that one to be counted, but not this one. So those are the same color. Uh, let's find a color. Light green would work, wouldn't it? Um, have I done all? I haven't done my rotational symmet symmetrical counterpart to this. That is a one or a six. So this is a three or an eight. Ah, Bobbin's, Bobbin's face, that, that's very annoying. Okay, um, all right, so let's look at the total of the 32 cage now. It's either nine again, which was the same as an option there, or it's 14 again, which is the same as an option here. <laughs> so this is nine or 14. 9 or 14, that's a 12 cage, so that counts. That's a 3 cage, so that counts. So we've got 15 there. So we need 17 more from this cage and this cage, or just one of those cages. Hmm. 2, I can write there by Sudoku. Two is the opposite of that. Oh, two. Yeah, that's a four. That's a nine. That's just transposing these digits. I suspect this is something I have not. Uh, no. Uh, have I definitely transposed all of the digits that I possibly could? Because that's going to be a very quick way of under underutilizing resources that we've earned. Look what about that square? That's got to be. Oh, I see. It's just a one-five pair. Okay, I'm not sure now. That's a nine cage. So if that if this is a three, it doesn't count that nine cage. So let's think about that. So if that's a three, that cage is not counted because it has the same total as this one. So this cage would have to account for the whole of the balance, which was what? 70, this would be a 17 cage. And it would then transpose into that one, which would be something. And oh, who knows? Because 17 feels like a very average total. Um, but oh no, that's oh, no, that's tricky, isn't it? I don't like that at all. Uh, but if okay, but hang on, if that's a three, that is a one. So this is a nine cage. So this has to be a cage ending in nine. If that's a one, this would have to be a nineteen cage. So this would be a nineteen cage. What did I say? That would be a seventeen cage. Yeah, so you'd know that there was no 5 involved in the transposition. But that, that would work in terms of the difference between the digits. You know, a 3-cell cage mapping to a 3-cell cage with a difference of 2 is achievable. We know that. Um, okay, so maybe that's, maybe that's right. What was the other option here? 8. If that's 8, this is 6. Um... Right, what's the what else happens? This is 14. So that cage now comes into account for this cage's purposes. So this comes down, that comes down to being an eight cage. Without that's one three four, which goes to one, two, three. This becomes a six cage. 
Oh, uh, that's right. That doesn't work. Good grief. That's quite complicated. Um, yeah, so if this is an 8, there's quite a few things that have to be seen then. This cage becomes an 8 cage, and it's not got a 2 in it, so it's 1, 3, 4. 1 and 3 transpose to themselves, 1 and 3, but the 4 transposes to a 2. So this becomes a 1, 2, 3 triple, adding up to 6. But this is green. And that's meant to add up to, so this has to now end in a 6, but it adds, ends in a 4. That's not right. So this is not 8. Um, this is 3. And therefore that is 1. And now, well now that's 1, that's 5, that's 2. Okay, we're going to take advantage of the low hanging fruit. That's 5, that's 3. Now, Doing these means I can transpose the 5, 5, 3, that's 4, that's 3, and that's 5, that's 1, 6, this is 6 or 8, oh I see, and that's 6 or 8 as well, so we get a 6, 8 pair in row five. Right, okay, let's look at this then, because this this cage now ends in a nine. So this cage ends in a nine, and this can't be a nine cage, because even if that's six, this would have to be a one, two pair, and it can't be. So this is a 19 cage. Right, so this can't be a six. This is, <laughs> this is still brilliant. If this is a 6, these two digits add up to 13, but they can't be 4, 9, 5, 8, or 6, 7, so it's not a 6, that's an 8. And therefore, that's an 8, that's a 6, that's a 6, that's a 6, that's an 8, that's an 8, that's a 7. These two digits add up to 11 now, and they're not 3, 8, 4, 7, or 5, 6, so they're 2, 9. I can do that. That's 9, that's 2. That's two, that's one. One we know transposes to three, so I get a bit more joy. Um, one, three, seven. Oh, gobbins. Uh, this must be done. Well, okay, where's three in column two? It's there is the answer. So that's got to be a six. That's a six. These squares are three, five, seven. That's a five. That's a three, that's a seven. This row needs 4 and 9. Yeah, we can do it. 4 and 9. That's 9, that's 6. Oh, we've done the 6s. Uh, what about this row then? 5 and 8. Yep, 5, 8, 8, 1, 1 and something. But that, that means I'm going to get this cage. Um, 7, I want to say. So this cage adds up to 17. Is that right? Um, this cage adds up to 9. Uh, so, so it discounts that one, and these cages have to add up to 32, 15. It does. That's what it works. Oh, that's so clever. Right, okay. But now we, we haven't finished. Well, we've not only not finished, but we haven't finished down here either. But also, all of these colours might be wrong in the sense that I've not, um, I'm not sort of, yeah, so like light green. Is, is numbers ending in 9. So that should be light green, as should this, as should possibly other things as well. Um, that's ending in 8. Have we got any other cages ending in 8? That's ending in 7. Oh, good grief. This is Oh, 7 is that one. So that should be orange. This is ending in 8, this is ending in 3, this is ending in... What's that ending in? 3. Ah, 3. So that should be green. Sorry. That should be green. That's ending in 2. That's ending in 2. So that red one should be grey. This cage I haven't even done. This is ending in 8, and that's ending in 8. So that should be purple. This is ending in seven. Have I only got one? Oh no, seven is orange, isn't it? Right. 
So this could be correct. I don't know. I don't know. Let's kick tick. <laughs> that is an absolute beast. <laughs> absolute beast of a puzzle. It's brilliant. It's so clever. My goodness me. Good grief. The bookworm. I, did, I beat your setting time, but not by much. Wow. Just wow. That is an extraordinary puzzle. <laughs> I mean, the logic, the fact the logic the whole way through is gorgeous and, and so original and weird. <laughs> and I loved, there was a point in it when I suddenly worked out that the difference between all the numbers apart from five was two. That And that felt like a total epiphany. Um, good. I'm going to be very interested to see what the comments are on this one. That was, that was so good. So good. Um, let me know how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And please don't forget to subscribe. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.